It happened long before our time. It would change the face of our planet forever. A gigantic object from space smashed into the Earth. The planet was transformed into a fiery furnace. It was left a wasteland. All life was extinguished. In one massive blow, a whole era of Earth's history came to an end. But the world recovered and began to bloom once again. The age of humanity dawned. Man conquered the Earth and subdued it. But the cosmos has long been preparing its second strike. This is a future history of our planet and its inhabitants. In that future, we are threatened by a catastrophe on an unimaginable scale. A catastrophe just like the one that happened so long ago. Two years ago, a deadly comet was discovered. Since then, almost everywhere in the world, people have constantly watched the skies. Only a few very remote areas have not yet heard of the imminent danger. Elsewhere, people are working to avert the disaster at the last minute. Yeah, in 10 minutes. Don't worry, I'll be there. The Center for Advanced European Studies, nicknamed CESAR, in Bonn, Germany. Geologist Jan Smit is carrying a core sample from the floor of the Atlantic, a reminder of the catastrophe 65 million years ago. 65 million years ago. You see this layer of green spherules and, and brownish stuff. In the light that of this evidence from the past, he is meeting with an international team of scientists to discuss the possible consequences of a comet hitting the Earth. If it happens, what will it mean for our world and its seven billion people? This is going to obliterate all the life on a continental scale. Anything that's unprotected is going to die within the first few minutes after this impact. Today is the day. The telescopes of the world's largest observatories are all trained on one target. Astrophysicist Noah Boyle heads the observation team in Hawaii. He and computer scientist Xiang Yatan have supplied important data for the mission. Thanks, Xiang. I checked my data again. Space agencies around the world have been on red alert ever since. This project, established under the most intense pressure imaginable, represents the collective brain power of our planet. We'll have to blast at least a tenth of the comma to deflect it from the its orbit. Aboard the Ariana 5 is you know, I'd rather bet on science than faith. But we better pray this works. It will be impossible to destroy the
A probe with a nuclear warhead 800 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima has been launched to deflect the comet from its course. Like billions of people around the world, the Vatton family are anxiously awaiting the outcome of the probe's mission. You recall, Lomos, six months ago, the Ariane 5 began its voyage from the European Space Agency Launch Center in Kourou. Overcoming immense technical obstacles, engineers finally succeeded in mounting the rocket launcher's payload. A giant Have they blown it up? They will. Don't you worry. Shh. At just two minutes until impact of the sensor, here are pictures of the comet transmitted live. The huge lump of ice and rock is racing toward Earth at over 200,000 kilometers an hour. Fernando Martinez has been working in Houston for several years to support his wife and children in Mexico. And now, a message from the President of the United States. Good morning. On this day, where the destiny of our precious world is at stake. The government of the United States of America can be proud of the effort our country has made in cooperation with the international community. But will the probe succeed? Given the limits of the technology, scientists have their doubts. 18 months is a very short time in which to prepare any sort of response to uh, a major emergency of this kind. Physicist Alan Harris runs an international research program aimed at averting catastrophic collisions. There would be no time to develop any more powerful type of rocket than, than is in everyday use at the present time. And that rocket would have to be uh, uh, refitted in uh, about 12 months in order to carry a payload of some four tons. The largest available launch vehicle is the European Space Agency's Ariane 5. With such a short lead time, it's the only option. The rendezvous point uh, will be at about the distance of the planet Mars, and that will be some four weeks before the comet is due to impact the Earth. If this doesn't work, there's absolutely nothing we can do to avoid the greatest natural catastrophe that civilization has ever experienced. This is the moment of truth. May God be with us all. If they don't crack it, the sensor at least will give us the exact position of the comet. The vast explosive power of the warhead is dissipated into space. The comet remains on course for Earth. Papa, what's going to happen now? Notstandsgesetze The comet of this size coming at us from the outer reaches of the solar system has a, uh, is traveling at very high velocity. It has a tremendous amount of kinetic energy. Uh, the force is required to deflect or destroy uh, a comet of this size are completely beyond what is available with current technology. Uh, and so in my opinion, this attempt was doomed to failure right from the start. And I, I really can't see anything that we could possibly do. News of the mission's failure spreads like wildfire. Yet there are remote regions that remain oblivious to the growing fear. 
Lomama and the other men of the Pygmy Baka tribe go on hunting as usual. No, Maria. I'm sure you're safe in Yucatan. I'll be with you soon, Maria. How's our little baby doing? Good. And Luisa? Hey, little lady. No, Maria. I'll take the smaller roads. I should be there in about three days. Stop worrying. I love you. Fernando heads out of Houston to return to Mexico. No one yet knows just when the comet will hit. Far from the big city, it is deceptively calm. In populated areas, however, the situation is deteriorating. Höchstwahrscheinlich werden die Grenzen geschlossen. Das Notstandsrecht wird überall in Kraft treten. Und die strategischen Reserven werden ausschließlich für die eigenen Belange benutzt. Sociologist Wolf Dombrowski is a world-renowned disaster management expert. Interessanterweise sind die strategischen Reserven unterschiedlich verteilt. Es gibt so etwas wie betriebswichtige äh, Reserven, es gibt versorgungswichtige Personale. Und für all diese Bereiche sind Zuteilungspläne vorhanden. Also es sind keineswegs Reserven für die gesamte Bevölkerung. National strategic reserves include non-perishable food, water, medicine and fuel. In Germany, the stocks will last between three and four months, assuming they survive the disaster. What happens after that is anybody's guess. We have a comet coming in at 135,000 miles an hour. It's eight miles across, and it's going to hit the Earth at almost all of that velocity. The atmosphere counts for nothing. Something like that will release 100 million megatons of energy. It plows through the atmosphere in a second or two. Whether it's a deep ocean or not, doesn't matter. It's so much bigger than even the depth of the deepest ocean that it just blasts out a huge crater. This is going to obliterate all the life on a continental scale. Anything that's unprotected is going to die within the first few minutes after this impact. exactly where the comet's point of impact will be. Okay, Chad, now two degrees south. Experts are working round the clock to predict just where the comet will hit. Okay, I see. We just have to wait. Wow. This thing's putting out 100,000 kilograms of dust per second. That's like 10 times more than Comet Haley in 1986. No wonder it's got such a big tail. Noah? I've got a leak from a friend in Arecibo. They've estimated the coordinates at the point of impact. Have they released it? No, it's top secret. They won't go public until they've got an evacuation plan. The point of impact is now known, but the breakthrough wasn't made with optical telescopes. 
The radio telescope in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, is the largest in the world. Its data, 10 times more precise than an optical telescope's, made it possible to plot the point of impact to within a few kilometers. The problem with this is we have to wait until the comet is really quite close to the Earth, uh, about two weeks before the impact. But at that time, it will be possible uh, to transmit um, a radio signal to the comet. The comet will reflect a part of this signal, and that will be then received at the ground as an echo. Now, the transmitted signal will have a particular frequency, and the echo will have a slightly different frequency. And on the basis of, of these radar data, that we, would then, we will then be able to calculate exactly uh, where on the surface of the Earth and at what time uh, the comet will hit. The point of impact has still not been announced. This is a tragic day in the history of our country. We have just received news that the point of impact of the comet will be somewhere in the region of the Yucatan Peninsula. Credible sources predict the complete destruction of our country and the entire Gulf of Mexico region. Can the whole Gulf of Mexico region be evacuated in such a short time? In diesem konkreten Fall gibt es keinen historischen Vorläufer, dass ein ganzer Staat sich und seine Gesellschaft evakuiert hat. Es wird individuelle Selbstevakuierungen geben. Also die Leute werden selbst wegfahren wollen und das zu Hunderttausenden. Aber im Sinne von ein Staat organisiert seine eigene Evakuierung, das halte ich für völlig unmöglich. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the News at 8. Tonight's coverage will be devoted exclusively to the comet. Three days ago, scientists finally succeeded in determining the impact... At least at my parents' place in Batoon would all be together. And how are we supposed to get there now? ...efforts were underway in the region, leading to outbursts of violence in Mexico and Southern California. U.S. Police and Michelle, from now on, do not take Sarah out alone. Oh, Papa, no one's going to... End of discussion. I'll come down once I'm ready, okay, Sherry? Give me half an hour. In Hawaii, the scientists have finished their work. What are you doing? Don't you want to be with your family when it hit? My parents died in a car crash when I was 15. My dad used to take me camping. We'd lie in our sleeping bags, looking at the stars. Now I've got a front row seat. I'm not giving it up. Okay, take care of yourself, all right? And look after Shine for me. She's already gone home. Do you think the seismographic data will transmit during the impact? What are you doing here? Didn't you want to... I mean, weren't you supposed to be on a plane like hours ago? Don't fight the mob for a seat. At least we have something to do here. Don't we? There are many evacuation plans which work perfectly in theory, but experience shows that evacuating even a single large city can end in chaos. Hardly anyone actually makes it to their destination. Auf dem Weg dorthin wird es höchstwahrscheinlich zu sehr unangenehmen Szenen kommen, weil 
Verkehrsunfälle passieren, äh, Autos äh, liegen bleiben werden, äh, andere werden dann diese Autos äh, mit Gewalt von der Straße räumen, ähm, sodass um Besitztümer, um Überlebenschancen auch bestimmt gekämpft werden wird. Law and order is breaking down. In the final days before impact, people are on edge as never before. Fernando has been walking for days. He hasn't met a soul who could have warned him. New York City is almost 3,000 kilometers from the expected point of impact, but New Yorkers fear the worst. Most of them have already left. Anyone who could afford it has fled to another continent. The others are trying to cross the border into Canada. Dr. David Sutler specializes in the psychological consequences of hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. As Hurricane Emily was making a direct threat on Charleston, South Carolina, I went out and interviewed people and asked them, what were they doing to prepare? And what we found was that people who were older, people who had higher income and the ability to buy supplies, but also people who had an internal locus of control, those people who believe that what they do can make a difference to prepare were more likely to prepare than those who had an external locus of control, those who believe that what was going to happen to them was determined by fate or by luck. Ah. Ah. Whenever you like, Mr. Comet, I'm ready. Stupid idiot! You could have killed her! Come on. Catherine, it's over here. In Paris, places and public shelters are scarce and nowhere near enough for everyone who has stayed in the city. Meanwhile, in Mexico, Fernando stumbles on an army barracks. Hey, is anyone there? Oh, 
Well, come on. Everybody's gone. And they left you to starve? The chance of survival here, only 800 kilometers from the calculated point of impact, is minimal. No one remains. Even the underground shelters are deserted. The hunters have sighted buffalo near the village. The Baka tribe's people have no idea that their lives will soon change forever. The comet announces its arrival like an angry god. This is the latest computer simulation. It shows that when the projectile strikes, it doesn't much matter whether it strikes on land or in the ocean. It heats the ground tremendously, just like a, a super bicycle pump that you've pumped up. The, the temperature gets up to 100,000 degrees. After it reaches this temperature, it expands out at high speed and throws material out several times the Earth's radius into space. At the same time, it brushes the floor of the impact crater away, throws it out at high speed, and removes about six miles of rock from the impact site. Calm down. Easy there. I'll get this car fixed and I'll take you with me to your tent. Upon impact, the comet releases energy equivalent to more than a hundred megatons of TNT. Come on, Maria, pick up the damn phone. <laughs> The crater at this stage is about 60 miles in diameter and it's lined with partly vaporized and even melted rock. At this stage, the crater begins to collapse under gravity. The floor rises, the adjacent terrain collapses into the cavity, and we're left with a, a lake of lava 100 miles in diameter. It only takes a couple of seconds for these enormous temperatures to cause an expanding fireball. This fireball is hot, initially 10 times hotter than the surface of the sun. Anything within 1,000 miles that sees that fireball will be incinerated. Houston is obliterated within seconds. The effect of the impact is felt at once, thousands of kilometers away. Oh no. Impact. That was the EMP wave. The EMP, or electromagnetic pulse, destroys all electronic equipment. Charged particles create effects similar to gigantic polar auroras. 
They are harbingers of the coming disaster. The tremendous amount of energy involved in an impact of this magnitude uh, would cause the release of charged particles, uh, in particular electrons, which would be moving around very, very rapidly. And these particles would give rise to very powerful electric and magnetic fields, which would induce currents in uh, any sort of uh, electrical conductor. Anything containing a computer chip uh, would probably be destroyed. Silent, invisible, the EMP races around the world. A cloud of dust and ash has reached Hawaii. It brings a salty, dirty rain that burns the skin. Traces of this phenomenon can be found in geological remains of disasters all over the world. Jan Smit specializes in analyzing the geological traces of the impact at the end of the Cretaceous period. We have here a special core from the Atlantic Ocean, just one of the many. You have here the slowly deposited uh, sediments of the latest Cretaceous, of the Mesozoic era. Every 10 centimeters is a thousand years or so. But then, 65 million years ago, we see this layer of green spherules and, and brownish stuff, and that was deposited only a few days, which demonstrates the enormous power of the impact some 3,000 kilometers away. Only the poorest of the poor remained in New York City. During the next hour, everything will suffocate under a thick coat of dust and ash. But the next stage of the catastrophe is already underway. When the comet falls into the shallow water off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, it creates a wave almost a kilometer high. This initial wave immediately breaks down to 30 to 50 meter and loses more height when it runs into deeper water, but it conserves its energy. Geophysicist Robert Weiss is an expert in the origin of tsunamis. The wave height goes down in deeper water, but it created a longer wavelength. And this wavelength travels to the coast. The tsunami is not the flow of water, it's a flow of energy, which means that the water particle transfers its energy to the next one. approaching and precious water on the front of the wave and builds up a gigantic wall of water. The tsunami hits a ravaged landscape. What is left of the coastal areas is drowned in the floods. The water surges hundreds of kilometers into the interior. The tsunami waves leave the Gulf of Mexico and propagate into the Atlantic Ocean. The gigantic waves simply roll over the Caribbean islands and race along the east coast towards North and South America. A peripheral wave six meters high crashes into New York. The 
wave, a hundred kilometers long, surges through the streets for hours before it begins to ebb. Waves cross the Atlantic at over 500 kilometers an hour, heading for Africa and Europe. The waves are still almost as massive as when they began. Cities such as Dakar and Lisbon, then Bordeaux and Brest disappear beneath the deluge. Despite warnings, many people have remained in the coastal areas. In the Pacific, there is no tsunami. Wait! Come on, Shark! But the temperature soon rises dramatically. Rock vapor condenses into small particles. Those small particles will re-enter the atmosphere all over the world and cause the most serious global problems of this impact. Unbearable heat all over the world. Within minutes, the sky seems to be burning. The scorching heat takes both people and animals by surprise. The Barker people have never experienced anything like it. They perform a ritual to break the terrible spell. Outside temperature is now over 100 degrees Celsius. Even in the observatory basement, the effect of the rising firestorm is obvious. Okay. The heat is created by rock vaporized during the impact and hurled out into space. What's really going to cause the Earth problems is the high-speed ejecta that falls all over the Earth. This stuff uh, has condensed from the vapor, it forms tiny little particles, and rains back into the atmosphere all over the Earth. At the same time, there's a lot of rock debris, fist-sized fragments that, that fall in here and there around the Earth. But the dangerous part is really these small particles. While the particles penetrate the atmosphere, they uh, heat themselves up, and that causes thermal radiation that bays the surface. Uh, the, the surface temperatures may rise uh, as high as six or 700 degrees. Uh, that will cause forests to burst into flame. Any unprotected animals, human beings, uh, that can't get under cover will uh, essentially be roasted alive. In Paris, the air is getting thick. It's difficult to breathe. it is already like an oven. Michelle! And the temperature is still rising. Michelle!
The underground part of the Saint Martin Canal is salvation from the hell above. The temperature outside soon reaches 400 degrees Celsius. The earth is burning. The smoke from the fires mixes with the falling dust particles. A thick veil forms over the earth. At ground level, the only light comes from the fires themselves. When catastrophes occur, everyone pitches in. Search and rescue is organized rapidly and efficiently. But this time? Bisher war es bei großen Naturkatastrophen immer so, dass die internationale Gemeinschaft sofort Hilfe organisiert hat und ihre Ressourcen mobilisierte und in die regional betroffenen Gebiete verbracht hat. Das wird dieses Mal nicht der Fall sein, weil die dazu notwendige Infrastruktur gar nicht mehr da ist. Es gibt keine Kommunikation, es gibt keine Treibstoffe. Das heißt, die Hilfe wird einfach nicht da sein. Die Welt wird brennen und keiner wird da sein, der sie löschen kann. The effect on the American continent is devastating. Within a radius of 1,500 kilometers from the point of impact, not one stone is left standing on another. Further away, the Earth is covered in rock expelled by the comet. The only people who survived were in underground shelters. After the dust cloud and the tsunami, fires rage in New York. Fernando's bunker withstood the earth tremors that followed the impact. He survived. But what has happened to this land that was once his home? The Baka tribespeople survived. They took shelter in a nearby cave. Henry manages to hotwire an abandoned car. An older model with no electronics, it survived the high voltage electromagnetic pulse.
Now they face a time that will put society to a grueling test. A time when the rules will be sacrificed in the fight for survival. Hey, there's a well. I'm gonna get her something to drink. You sit tight with your mother. Don't leave the car, it's dangerous out there. Situation wird es zu extremen Herausforderungen kommen, individuell, weil es an medizinischer Versorgung und an Ernährung fehlt. Also Mangelkrankheiten werden eine Rolle spielen. Äh, Infektionskrankheiten werden sehr schnell zum Tode führen. Die Lebenserwartung wird generell zurückgehen, aber auch kollektiv wird es zu sehr schweren Problemen kommen. Die Frage ist, welche Wissensbestände können eigentlich wie erhalten bleiben? Ähm, das Risiko, dass eine Art neues Mittelalter entsteht, ist sehr hoch. Would you look at this? Yeah. Must be lunar or something, but. Let's look for the others. You really think you still need those? Yes. Let's go. At this stage, no one has any idea of the extent of the catastrophe. Almost 75% of all life has been extinguished. It is uncertain whether the survivors have any chance of a future. The Earth is in the deadly embrace of a night that will last for months. 